Right, so we're talking about the Navy today. Um, first question I'd like to ask is, um, why did you want to join the Navy? Well, uh, to start off, I was born in Paisley, Scotland. Uh, youngest of 11. And when I reached 15 years of age, I got a job in a little factory not far from where I live. Only a couple of hundred yards away from, from my house. And uh, <coughs> I got pally with a lad in there. And he was always ranting on about he wanted to join the Merchant Navy. Well, I, was, yeah, I had no intention of joining anyway. <coughs> but the job was a bit of a dead end job, so I thought oh, we'll give it a go. What did it include, the factory job? Uh, I started off, I was on 50 pence a week, uh, making cogs. Like calls used to be the old sash calls for windows, the old fashioned windows, which you tell you. And they made ropes, crow's ropes, and all sorts of stuff like that. Mm. Silks, uh, different stuff. But it, as I say, I started off 50 pence a week, and then I got up to the dizzy heights of 150 a week. I took the crappiest job in the place on, which paid an extra quid. So, I can say it was a bit of a dead end job. But it was one, it was always a starting place. A few of my brothers had started there from school, you know, so they knew the family. But as I say, I got probably with this lad. And he was always ranting on about going to go to the Merchant Navy. I think his uncle was in the Merchant Navy or something. So I thought, right, we'll give it a go. So on the Friday, I think it was a Friday, we went up to Glasgow to the pool, which is like the employment exchange for the that's in there. Got the forms, come home, got my dad to film in. But he was a bit reluctant to do it first because he, his first son he lost during the war. Right. Yeah, uh, 1945. He went through the war. Uh, he was only 19 year old. And at the war's end, he went for to give blood. And he got a dirty needle and it poisoned his blood like you know, so. Okay. He was a bit reluctant for me to go in the merchant to, to go in the Navy later. But as I say, it happens. I got, he agreed after a bit of coaxing to sign the forms. And I posted them away. And anyway, on the Monday morning, I goes in and sees a lad that I was part of it. And I says, uh, You sent your forms in? He says, No, he says, My mother won't sign them. <laughs> so, I thought, well, so you were in the Navy on your own? <laughs> yeah, I said, I just sent mine in. I said, anyway, I thought, oh, I can't back out now. You know what I mean? So, anyway, it comes back. I have to go up for an interview up to Glasgow. So it goes up, has an interview, and they accept me for training. So I get the train ticket, they supply me a train ticket. I uh, went down to Sharpness in Gloucestershire for training, six weeks training. It was like teaching you how all the nice thoughts, how to wait on, how to serve the drinks. And then you go in it <coughs> shows you how to make beds up in case you're cabin steward and stuff like that. How long did the training take then? To six weeks. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. D to be a deckhand took I think it was about ten weeks. And uh, just you went to the catering steward or whatever. That was, uh, that was a six week training course. So you go through all that, all your training and halfway through you get um, you get inoculated for smallpox, which is terrible. You're out for a week, you're really, really, really ill. But it, once you get over that... What is it they do to you? They put the smallpox into you, they give you, just score it. Just break the skin and you put the smallpox in with so your antibodies can start working against it, which makes you immune to it after. But uh, it's terrible, really, really, really bad. But you're in billets. At first, when you first go, you're in billets, which is like big long dormitories. And then that's your first three weeks, something like that. And then you move from there onto an old fashioned training ship. It's like an old sailing ship that we've got moored up on the Severn. 
And uh, that, as a wake up call when you go there, it's full of rats and flipping uh, cockroaches and all sorts of beasties hanging about. <laughs> and then the most frightening thing when you first go, there was an old bloke that took the deckhands for training and he had a peg leg. Like one of them old films, you know, yeah. you see in the films, the old pen legs, <laughs> pirate films, in one of them. And uh, i never seen this rope, but I used to hear him at night walking in the deck above you. And he used to find the life out you, you know, the first couple of nights. And every night at 10 o'clock, when it, you'd, you'd have your cocoa at 9 o'clock, and at uh, 10 o'clock it was lights up, you had to be in bed. And he'd walk up and down the deck, and he'd clump, clump, clump. <laughs> But uh, we never got to see him. But the deckhand, the, the ones that were training to be deckhands, they 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 seen him like no. Yeah. We never ever seen him. I'm saying that at the end of the six weeks, you have a little bit of a test, and then you that's it. You get a train train back to Glasgow, and you go back up to the pool again, and they put you on a ship. So I got a ship that was a uh, in what they call the Gaylock. It's where the Trident submarines are now. And uh, I got a British tanker, BP tanker. So it goes on there expecting to be, you know, steward and all this and end up washing dishes like in the pants. So you do that for a couple of years, you know, to your land. But the first trip we done there, we went from Glasgow all the way up to the Persian Gulf. Mm. We did not run Iraq. Then we come back through the Red Sea again, went to Antwerp. Then we were on charter, which is, they could send you anywhere. So uh, we come back through the Red Sea again at half pace. So they sent us back up to the Persian Gulf, reloaded with oil again. They sent us through the Red Sea, back through the Canal, Suez Canal. And then we had to turn around and go to Bombay. So we discharged oil in Bombay, come back, sent us to Tripoli. So, <coughs> during all this time, you'd very rarely gone ashore, because of a quick turn around. You'd maybe only there two days, so you might get one day ashore, something like that, if you were lucky. <coughs> but, after the four months, I thought, that's it, I'm not going back in one of them again. So, I put me off. <laughs> so, uh, that's me leave, I had about two weeks leave, something like that. I went back up, got another job. Uh, sent me on a ship called the Scottish Star, Blue Star Line. And uh, it goes down to, goes from Glasgow down to London. And then we shipped up for the uh, west coast of America. It was a whiskey boat and took whiskey and passengers. From, uh, Let's have a few whiskeys there. <laughs> <laughs> from Glasgow to the west coast of America. So we go from Glasgow uh, into Lisbon, London first, uh, Lisbon, and then up to the west coast of America. We'd stop off at a little place on the, in South America. How long did that, that trip take you? It uh, took them about three months trip. Yeah. So done a couple of them. Went from, say, we went into Los Angeles, uh, Long Beach. Uh, San Francisco, all the way up the coast, Seattle, Portland. See some good sights yeah. and stuff. Hamilton into Canada, and into Vancouver. You had a couple of weeks in Vancouver, and then you done the same again. And then you probably call in at Hamburg and Rotterdam on the way back, let some of the passengers off and one thing or another. Yeah, that was good. And from there, uh, I got a trip to, I went on a Paraguay Star, which was a, that was an intermediate as well, took about 70 odd passengers. And that was from uh, from London to South America. So you do London, Madeira, you do London, Lisbon, Madeira, Canary Islands, and then you go to the coast of Brazil, you do Recife, Bahia, Salvador, Santos, Rio de Janeiro to Uruguay, you do Montevideo, and then you go, yeah, what I had was a, 
a brain character during the war. He was, I think he worked in signals and different stuff in that. But there was something wrong with it that damaged his head. And he used to go off. Halfway through cooking a meal, he'd take off. And he'd be at the back of the ship and he'd be shouting and bawling and screaming at bloody seagulls and God knows what. <laughs> that would be like, you can't have to play So I'd end, up, I'd end up having to cook the dinner. So I'd, I'd cook the breakfast, whatever. I'd cook the tea at night. And <laughs> he'd be off in one of these big rants. <laughs> oh, thank God. What, something like that? I don't know. He, 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 just the war. Must have said him crazy. I think. He'd be alright if he did quiet. And then he'd, he'd just suddenly you'd see a sort of smile coming on his face and, and he would be off. Because the, the galley was at the end of the ship, at the after the end of the ship. The passenger galley was midship and the crew galley was like at the after the end of the ship. So I'd end up cooking for 30 crew, you know, deck hands and firemen and grazers and God knows what. But it was a good ground and I enjoyed it. After a bit, the, the chef, the passenger's chef, he uh, he put me in the pantry, made me up to an assistant pantry man in the main galley, you know, where the passengers were. So you'd end up there, you'd do salads and stuff like that, and you'd have to wash up and different things. And uh, <coughs> as I say, I'd done about three or four trips on that. And then I thought, oh, I fancy going, trying somewhere else. So anyway. The chef wasn't too pleased because he was going to take me into to the main galley to be his, uh, his veg chef, his veg cook, and he was going to try and train me up to be a chef. But I thought, you know, when you're young, like you just you yeah. just want to go here, there, and everywhere. So I thought, no, I fancy going to try Australia and New Zealand and different parts. So same company, only it was New Zealand. It's the branch of the same company, New Zealand Shipping Company. I went with them. Got a job with one of their ships, and first trip was Australia. They were six month trips. So I ended up going to Australia. Uh, that was quite good, but I wasn't really struck on the Australians. <laughs> the Australian lads weren't too keen on us. No. <laughs> no, they don't like the palmies. But after that, we come back. Uh, I got a job on another ship that went to New Zealand. So they were all six month trips there. So I ended up going to New Zealand and I uh, had a really good time there. That was that was a great New Zealand your favourite yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. Well I was there, I tried to get on a ship that I it stopped away for twelve months. Never come home. And it used to run between New Zealand and Japan. Right. Yeah. Uh, a lovely little ship it was, lovely crew quarters and I'd do a piggy hustle bar thing that you had for the crew. But I couldn't get on it. <laughs> Nothing. Practically had to wait somebody died before you got on it. <laughs> really good thing then. But uh, if I got on that one, I think that'd be that. They send you home like every year for about three months leave. I think you've done nine months away. You get three months leave and then they ship you back out again. But uh, unfortunately, I couldn't get on that one. So. Anyway, stopped on. Uh, Done a few trips to New Zealand. Really enjoyed that. And uh, that's where I ended up. That's when I finished my career. Yeah. So how come you finished your career? Uh, I had a bit of a altercation with one of the officers, so What did that include? It included uh, me belting him on. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you belt him on? <laughs> because it was me a pain. <laughs> Aye, what happened? Uh, it just uh, we had the drink, he was drinking with me in the afternoon in our cabin. Uh, and I said to him, I said, well, you don't have to go up and get dressed tonight. I said, we'll serve you in the, the little um, annex. And so he said, the captain's having a party tonight. That's what he says. Well, uh, <coughs> he said, we've got to dress up, full uniform and all that. So I said, all right. His engineers were officers and you know, on the ship. So anyway, off he goes. And about me later on, me and this Irish lad, we think I thought, we could do with a few more beers, you know, like you did. Anyway, I goes up and uh, goes in there thinking, the captain's having his party. I spoke to John, I said, I'll speak to you in a minute. 
Maybe the captain was like, get them out of here, the old bad man. So he gets up and starts manhandling us. So yeah, one thing led to another and this scuffle broke up. <laughs> he got planted. <laughs> <laughs> and that was that, I'm afraid. Yeah. But he met some nice people though. Yeah. Oh, Good friends and stuff. Some cracking. Met some cracking lads. You also meet some right numpties as well. Oh, I bet you do. Uh, you, get, you, you get the full spectrum. <laughs> but uh, on the whole, the majority of the lads were good lad, look after each other. Yeah, had some fun. Had some funny moments with different people. Remember a young Welsh lad? Uh, one of the other stewards. He was on a. Uh, <laughs> he was at uh, Brazil. Look at Santos. And when you go to the Canary Islands, you used to be able to buy cigarettes. But they don't, you'd only let you have 200. And you could double your money on them when you got to South America. Buenos Aires used to sell it. You bought them for a pound and you got two quid to them. Something like that. But uh, this well slapped. <laughs> there was a bloke on the docks and he was asking, shouting at him, do you any cigarettes to sell? You know? He says, I've got some. So anyway, he's barting away with this lad. So. And this, they agree a price. So he was done onto the dock, the lad hands him the money and he hands over the cigarettes. And he comes back on board again and he's, he's bragging about it. Uh, look at this, I've got three quid, you know, blah blah. You know, cruzeros like it's about a thousand cruzeros to the pound and this. So I'm looking at him and I says, let me see that money. So he gives me a thought. That's bloody football couldn't you not? Know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm barely in the middle but I said, don't get that on bike notes. <laughs> it came along. It was some promotion or something, my big Pelly in the front of it, like hundreds of cruzeros notes. <laughs> he had a pile of them like that. Got mugged out. <laughs> he ran back down, but the block had gone. He was off. <laughs> he was off Yeah. I uh, had a few different things like that. Same in it. We were in the Suez Canal once. <laughs> big Scots lad. He was battered with this lad. He was on that first ship over there. <laughs> the big BP tanker. And he's bring these boats alongside and they've got like camels and bags made of camel skin and all sorts of stuff, you know, they sell. So what they do, they send a basket home. And you put your money in the basket. And the basket is down with your money up of what your boat comes up, you know. Yeah, and this boat, he got this blue uh, bag that he wanted. And he says, I'll have the blue one. Right, okay, send your money down. So, sends the money down, they send him a brown one up. So he says, uh, no, blue one. No, 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 you keep that. He says, no, I want that brown one. No, you're not getting it. Go away. And then the next thing, he disappears and he comes back with a big blocking tackle. Like a big steel thing where you put the ropes over, you know, pull these, pull these, pull these. Puts it down, shouts over to the block. Send me that blue bag up. No, you're not getting that. <laughs> he lifts his block and tackle. <laughs> Put it straight through his boat. Next thing his boat sinks. <laughs> Gypsies are swimming in the water and all the stuff. Oh, I, was, I say I was only a kid then, I was just a few stitches. And then he just walked away quite a thing like <laughs> Except not the bag. Kept the baggers up. <laughs> well, I well, had lots of stuff like that. Yeah. Another one came in and, what do you call it? It <coughs> was one of these Arab Dow comes in. We're just coming out of the Red Sea, coming up to the canal. Up to the Suez Canal. And this bloke came in on the dow. And I think it, he was up the mast on the dow. The skipper shouted, Get that hose on him. So, as he got alongside the boat like that, he was just ready to jump on the boat. And this bloke there like that, hit him with a hose and knocked him straight in the water. Knocked him straight in the water. I was, I was in the knot. But, uh, same with it, when we used to go to. Uh, through the Panama Canal. Before you uh, tell all the kids, 
save all your bread up for the donkeys at the Panama Canal, you know. So, of course, they get the Panama Canal and the kids are there with bits of bread. And they're like, where's the donkeys? So, like little trains. <laughs> and you get one either side and they pull you through the canal, you know. <laughs> pull you through the lot. But that's what they call them, donkeys. <laughs> so you got, you got like a wigging wire rope attached to them and they pull you up because you've got the locks. <laughs> ah, it's amazing. But as I say, I really enjoy my family time in the in here. Just unfortunate the way I left. <laughs> I was ready for coming out anyway. So. Yeah. Yeah, well, I was 21 then, so. You know. How many years was you in it for? Five. Five. Five years old. When I was sixteen, I come out with a twelve. I come up uh, I come out come down here, nineteen sixty six. The year England won the World Cup. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that never went down without being Scottish. No. Never mind. Yeah, yeah, it was a good good experience. I missed it when I come up, to be honest. Yeah. <coughs> and I started working factories doing night shifts in 6 2 and 2 10. I thought, oh God, what have I done? <laughs> but uh, I tried to get back in, but I, I, was, I was tied up to London. I had a contract with a pool in London, which is like the employment exchange. And, <coughs> and I had a contract with them. So I'd had to go down there to go before a board light. Like, Explain why I got a bad report, you know, things like that. So I thought that's so all right. So I didn't take the chance, I thought. Uh -huh. So I just carried on here. And I've been here ever since. Yeah. Well, that's about my Mexican Navy career in a nutshell. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> so right, thanks a lot for that. Okay, that's <laughs>